Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we've got a few minutes here. I just wanted to kind of set the stage. Serena has a tremendous amount of uh, true hosting duties coming up with a great fireside chat and then a panel about kind of activating and trying to put into practice some of the things we've been talking about, which um, you know, gets me to one big thing coming out of conferences like this one. A lot of places we get a chance to, as Noah was saying yesterday, treat it almost as therapy and complain about things and try to figure things out and discuss how we can make it better. And then we all go back to our day jobs and um, it evaporates. And I think a lot of that is because I'm not surrounded every day by um, top level thinkers like you guys who can come together and, and solve problems and it puts me in a vacuum of busy weeks where it's tough to focus on how to get to the next stage. So hopefully a little bit later in the afternoon we'll answer some of those questions or struggle ourselves to try and answer some of the questions and you know get ready to ask your questions to this panel we'll put together because I think the most important thing if you're up for it and still here and energized is to hear from you guys and to hear what you're really, really concerned about. Um, a couple of things that came out of yesterday for me that continue to set the stage over this 48 hours was selfishly it was a, it was a great day for me because I had so many people come up to me um, and start to tell me about what I was trying to get to, one kernel that I was trying to get to yesterday when I was able to open of what they're trying to get back to in their own daily lives. Um, and I had one person come up to me and you know, kind of say that they'd lost that spark of creativity in their life and I assumed that he would say in second grade, in eighth grade, in high school, and the spark of creativity that he had lost was actually he majored in writing and creative writing in college. That's not a spark of creativity lost. That's an incredible creative background that's still there for him to explore. And for me, that's what I was trying to get to by the, the last slide that I offered up yesterday, that 10%, that 5%, that 1%. And it's a big, heavy ask. But how do we carve that time out and try to get back to those things in our lives that matter? Um, it's not creativity as in you have to be doing something that you think other people consider to be creative. The, the word creative here, I want to be really careful and always caution myself to not use it in a vacuum of, well, that's a creative idea. The idea is so much bigger than creative. It's, it's how we use tools and technology and data and platforms and the whole ecosystem of marketing from strategy through media, through creative, through production, and all come together with the responsibility to go back to whatever job we have and be part of that whole thing to drive ideas. That's the most important thing to me. The idea is the goal. Creativity isn't the goal. The idea is the goal, and we're all responsible for that. Another thing that came out for me yesterday, and I'm not cautioning it because we shouldn't be aspiring to do it, but purpose. Purpose is like a, it's a big thing to me um, because I take it, and I could be totally wrong, and I love you guys call me out and say, no, that's totally wrong. But the way I think about it now is purpose is just what is the mission that you feel you're on? What is the thing that you think you ought to be doing? It doesn't have to be changing the world. Uh, what I saw some of yesterday and started to put more pieces together was the nice thing is small ideas or ideas that do start to have a purpose can change the world for people. And I keep coming back to the Super 8 example, like finding the, the veteran angle for Super 8 is an incredible sense of purpose that doesn't have to go massive. But as I quickly mentioned yesterday, the idea of serving, the idea of what um, being ex-military means, and the idea of being veterans crosses so many generations, but specifically speaks now to PTSD and so many issues that we have to deal with that I just, I know that's a massive idea. And as a creative, if somebody brought that to me, no matter where it came from, it would energize me to get fired up over a Super 8 hotel brand. Now, trust me, I'm not waking up one morning and going like, I can't wait to work for Super 8 in a hotel brand. That's not the way my brain works, but what I am hoping for is to find those kernels of ideas that can give me a purpose on any brand. So I would, I would suggest that um, challenging yourselves to think about purpose in a small way that could lead to a big thing, like the Twyla Tharp quote. You know, we chase small things because the small things and the doing the first step is what leads to so much, something so much bigger. Um, another thing that, that hit me yesterday was this idea of finding time again. 
You know, in our busy, crazy world, rightfully so, we have so many things to do at work and beyond, and I feel like we're expected to do so many things. We put so much pressure on us. I was joking with somebody yesterday, I feel like a couple generations ago, one goal would be to, to have a good life on your own and to do things for others or to raise a family, to make sure your kids got to college, those kind of things. Now it's like, you do all that and you have a great job and you have an amazing career and by the way, why haven't you written that novel you wanted to write? And it's just a lot of pressure. Why didn't you make that feature film that you had on the back burner? Why didn't you run these seven marathons? Just, it's a lot to do. So I understand we're all busy, how do we focus to find a little bit of time to start to pull ourselves out of the day-to-day? -day? I read some stat, no idea if it's how exactly true it is, but it suggested that over 50% of our time at work is spent on email. Um, and once you factor in meetings, it's you know, 80, 90% of our time doing meetings that probably don't turn into a ton most of the time. So how do we take time to pull ourselves out of that situation, give ourselves time in open office environments and with everything that we have to actually just do the hard work of thinking? Um, that's critically important. Uh, Lucy said something, and Serena just reminded me of it, so I'm gonna steal this quote from her and apologize if I stepped on her saying it again. But she said, be aware of the fragile nature of human attention. I love that idea for all of us, is to truly understand the fragile nature of human attention, especially nowadays, the fractured na nature of human attention. Where I take it, knowing Lucy and knowing what she's doing, is that challenge doesn't mean it's impossible to do what you passionately want to do, or even do things that are traditional. Lucy makes long-form documentary films. That's the thing you would not expect to be able to do in this fractured, fragile attention economy. But she can still do it. What I love that she said was finding a core idea and digging into it in a way that you know, and always checking yourself, that the audience will respond to it too. You know, always cautioning yourself to get off the paths that you think aren't headed in the right direction. That's the secret to failure for me, is I don't think we're really built to fail or, or chasing failure. I think we're chasing the right path and we're always consist con continuously adjusting that path. So we avoid failure because we tend to pick the right direction out of anything that might fail. Maybe that's an overly optimistic view, but, but that's what I hope for. Um, we have some amazing stuff coming up today. Serena's gonna take over. She's gonna have a terrific chat. And then we're gonna have a panel that is um, talking about getting practical about returning to the big idea. Uh, and again, I would love to um, have that panel interrupted if it's okay with uh, Serena who will be moderating it uh, by you guys at any given point. I'm a huge fan of people interrupting these things and especially calling me out, calling people out, throwing grenades, rolling them into the situation. Uh, I, I love that. I love being told if I'm thinking about something wrong because I probably am. You know, I'm probably off on a hopefully just slight tangent or headed in the wrong direction. And the more I get called out and checked, the more I learn, the more I understand uh, from all of you guys. So thanks for still being here. Hopefully you're fired up for the day uh, a little bit or a lot. We have some stuff to cover and I apologize that it's so gorgeous outside and so dark in here, but uh, let's get things kicked off and have some fun. <laughs>